for the program's seventh district championship and 16th playoff appearance. Brought to you on the Vibe Live Network by ASI Protection Services, Southern Landscape, Covert Cadillac Buick GMC, Santex Material Handling, The Steam Team, Thundercloud Subs, Bussy Roofing, Empire Home Solutions, and Academy Sports and Outdoors. And now, calling the shots for today's game, here's the voice of the Timberwolves, Brad Cohn. Good evening, everyone. Welcome home to Cedar Park, Texas. This is Timberwolf Baseball tonight, the live worldwide broadcast of Cedar Park Baseball here on the Vipe Network on the Via the T. Brad Cone. Shane Showinski is our QA tonight. Tonight, the start of the second season, the UIL State Playoffs. This is the opening round by district, they call it. Timberwolves hosting the Dripping Springs Tigers of District 26-5A, the three seed there. Game one tonight, best of three series. Game two tomorrow at Dripping Springs at one o'clock. If a game three is needed, it'll come immediately after game two. Cedar Park enters the playoffs on a downturn, having lost two of their last four in crushing fashion and falling out of their low position atop the district standings, giving away the title to Georgetown. Dripping Springs in a similar boat. They finished third in 26-5A after falling to Kerrville Tyvee on the final night of the regular season. Tyvee not even being a playoff team. Tigers are 18-11 overall, 11-5 in district. Looking at their schedule, their only signature win, a 3-1 triumph over district champ Canyon back on March 8th. These two teams are former district rivals from 2011 through 16. They played 13 times. Cedar Park owns the series lead five games to three. This game, the 300-second broadcast of Timberwolf Baseball on KMAX Sports or the Vipe Live Network since starting this back in 2008. We won 191 of them. Timberwolves going for all-time win number four, 21 here in their 23rd season of varsity play, and it would be the 215th career win for head coach Lanny Williams. His record at Cedar Park right now, 55 and 24 overall, 22 and seven in district, four and one in the playoffs, all of those winning percentages in all three categories. The best of any Cedar Park baseball coach ever. Weather today for Cedar Park, sunny, windy, 90 degrees, dropping only into the 80s by games end. Humidity high at 70%. Wind from the south at 10, that's blowing in from left, as it usually does. Again, send your email tonight to v of the t at gmail.com. Voice of the Timberwolves all run together. V O F T H E T V of the T at gmail.com. Final District 25-5A standings will come in just a moment. We're going to pause for the national anthem. Is in right center field. Tonight, singing our national anthem is Miss Amy Harvey. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail? At the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight, or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets rattled, the bombs bursting in air the night that our flag was still there. Whoa, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave. Whoa, the land of the free and the home of the All right, there you have the national anthem from Amy Harvey. Final district standings. 
The four-way tie at the top. Liberty Hill, Rouse, Cedar Park, and Georgetown. Georgetown gets to claim the biggest part of that. What they did was they took only the records of these teams against each other. Rouse and Liberty Hill were both two and four. Cedar Park and Georgetown both four and two. So those two tied at the top, and then we let them beat us twice. So Georgetown is actually the district champ. We are second. Liberty Hill and Rouse are third and fourth. Winner of our game here tonight gets the winner between Eagle Pass Win, who is 27 and two, and San Antonio Edison, who's 15 and eight. Don't be terribly surprised if that's Edison which actually played a far tougher schedule. The only good team win faced was Corpus Christi Ray, and they lost four to nothing. Win these first two rounds, and Cedar Park likely faces Liberty Hill in the third. Yeah, win is 27-2, and they are unranked. Other district teams in the first round, Liberty Hill's playing Buta Johnson. Rouse against their champion, New Braunfels Canyon. Rouse ended up in the four seed. And then Georgetown playing Alamo Heights. That's their four seed. So there's the story. Liberty Hill has five wins in this 13 game series. Cedar Park has eight. Four of those five came in a row. All three and 13 in the first one of 14. 13 was a weird year. They played three district games and we were in last place. Outside of those four in a row, Cedar Park is eight and one against them. Here we go, about four or five minutes early. Nico Reutis, the shortstop for the Tigers, steps in, takes the first pitch from Adam Vaughn, outside and low, 1-0. and Aiden Perry, their third baseman, bats second. The pitcher, Brandon Arvidson, hits third. We'll see all those here. There's a strike from Adam Vaughn. Of course, Vaughn pitching Louis Alonzo behind the plate. Defense behind him. Quentin Mullen at third, Julian Swift at short, Augie Garcia at second, Kay Davis at first. In the outfield, left to right, Ethan Becker, Brooks Dillman, Christian Pickens. Kind of a different lineup than we're used to. The biggest difference, Kay Davis playing first. This one fouled to the right side over the net, one and two. If you are batting order and we come to the plate, it's about to do that because I have about four minutes before time for game, but they started playing a little bit early. High and in, two and two to Nico Reutis. I know a lot of these names are Dripping Springs. They got a fight broadcast too. Melvin's their voice and he had to miss a game last year when they were playing Rouse at Concordia in the regional finals for a trip in the state playoffs. So that one misses high and in, three and two. Full count to Reutis. Director Programming for Fight, Merle Bertrand and I in this ball four. Did that game, went into extra innings, and Rouse won. It's really for Dripping Springs that night. So leadoff walk, no way to start a playoff game. Comes a 77 percenter there at first. Here's Aiden Perry, the third baseman. Left-handed hitter. Vaughn from the stretch, and it's outside 1-0. and Vaughn's numbers, 45 innings pitch, eight appearances, all starts, five and one record. 43 hits, 31 runs, 20 earned. Bunted on the ground, Mullen from third over for it. Moves the runner to second, but there's one down. Good fielding played by Quentin Mullen at third. Over to Cade Davis, his first fielding chance now at first base. Second, 25, Successful Arvidson. one. Pitcher Brandon Arvidson now, one out. Oh, let me get the data block going for you. Man, they started so quick, I didn't get that kicked into gear. First pitch misses, one and oh. Dripping Springs brought a lot of people, not as many as Cedar Park as you might expect. Very good hour drive away, and this is bloop foul down the right field line, chasing it, but unsuccessfully. It's Christian Pickens, one on one. Let's go, 
one down here with a runner at second. Adam Vaughn delivers. This one is a liner into right. They're chasing it. It's over his head. One hop off the wall. Rounding third is Reutis, and he will score an RBI double for the pitcher, Brandon Arvidsson, one nothing Tigers. Still one out, runner on second. The cleanup hitter, first baseman Mason Ashlock. Now batting for the Tigers, number one, Mason Ashlock. Swing and a miss. One, one to Ashlock, and he becomes the first hitter to start 0-1 against Adam Vaughn who is starting somewhat slow tonight. There's another pitch, a little bender for a called strike two. It would be great to get a strikeout on the cleanup hitter, especially with a runner in scoring position. There's strike three. He stood there and watched all of them. Not what you'd expect out of your cleanup hitter. Stood there for three called strikes, and there are two down. Five hitter, center fielder Tracy, Taylor Tracy. This one I think went off his bat, at the end of his bat, as he checks Wong, so it's 0 1. Got your message, Shane? Yeah, I, I, I'll try to keep it exactly in front. That's when it hisses and sputters like it is now. Put it down just a little bit, hoping that would go away. That one's fouled out of play. 0 oh 2 to Taylor Tracy. See the part wearing a rare combination tonight white pants, to black stripe, black jerseys with white numbers. It's all in black and white for the Timberwolves right here. Need two wins in the next, well, less than 24 hours. Game two tomorrow in Dripping Springs at one. If there's a game three required, which means the team that wins tonight does not win tomorrow at one, then that will happen right after that one. Swing and a miss. Two straight six-pitch strikeouts after the RBI double for Adam Vaughn. We're through a half an inning of play. Dripping Springs, one. Cedar Park, nothing. We'll be right back. understands how important your home and business is to you and the significant investment involved for quality roof installation. As a reputable and professional roofing repair contractor, Bussy Roofing offers years of experience that includes a complete and comprehensive range of roof services that are designed to enhance curb appeal, provide energy efficiency, and increase the value of your business or commercial property. That's Bussy Roofing, Cedar Park Roofing, Roof Repairs, and Roof Repairs restoration. Visit them at bussyroofing.com. All right, Brad Cone back at James Sevier Field at Matt Ariano Park, campus of Cedar Park High School. Round one of the seven rounds of the Texas State High School Baseball Playoffs. Stripping Springs at Cedar Park, a former district rival of ours from 2011 through 2016. Leading one to nothing over the Timberwolves right now. They sent five to the plate, a walk, a sacrifice bunt, an RBI double, and then two strikeouts. Adam Vaughn, 17 pitches, 11 strikes, six balls, a walk, a hit, a run, and a strikeout. Cedar Park will lead off with first baseman Cade Davis, then shortstop Julian Swift, batting third, the catcher Louis Alonzo, batting fourth on the mound, Adam Vaughn, batting fifth, right fielder Christian Pickens, Batting sixth, the D.H. Brady Richardson. Batting third, uh, seventh, third baseman Quint Mullen. Batting eighth, center fielder Brooks Dillman. Batting ninth, left fielder Ethan Becker. So for Cedar Park, Davis, Swift, Alonzo, Vaughn, Pickens, Richardson, Mullen, Dillman, Becker. The lefty 
Brandon Arvidsson on the mound. Tall guy, does not completely use that height with an overhand pitch. He throws it out at about 2 o'clock. Here's Cade Davis. 96 plate appearances. Second on the team to Swift's 100. 81 official at-bats, 32 hits, 27 singles, 3 doubles, 2 triples, 14 RBIs, 11 runs scored. He's been hit twice, reached on error 4 times, walked 13 times, struck out just 5 times, and 96 plate trips. Averaging 395. And that one high and in. 1-0. Both teams' dugouts making all sorts of noise, trying to bother the other team's pitcher. See the park's turn now. Swing and a miss for Davis. Didn't keep his head down on that one. 1-1. One, one. Swift on deck. Alonzo in the hole. The pitch. Curtain ball. Swing and a miss. A very nice pitch. One and two. Here's a one, two. Sliced foul over the third base dugout and out of play. Still one and two to Kay Davis. See the park, top of their order, kind of a murderer's row for batting average. Just went on the ground, gets a last final good hop to the third baseman. Allows him to field it cleanly and over. Aiden Perry to Mason Ashlock for the out. 5-3. One down for the All-State shortstop, Julian Swift. First pitch to Swift, another nice curveball. Called strike one. Julian 100 plate trips, swung on and lifted high, hard, and deep to left. It's going. Hits it and on the wall. Julian with a stand-up double to left with one down. Folks, if we didn't have our standard wind blowing in from left, that one would have been out of here. Would have been emu food. Here's Louis Alonzo. Louis to the plate for the 92nd time. 76 at-bats, 31 hits, 26 singles, four doubles, a triple, 18 RBIs. One of the team leaders in that category. Been hit eight times, leads the team in that category. Walked seven times, only struck out six times. Batting 408, on base at 505. That one misses low to Louis, 1-0. I want to say hello to Louis's grandparents in La Mesa, Texas, watching the broadcast tonight. Inside, 2-0 to Alonzo. Vaughn on deck, Pickens in the hole, just one out. Tying run, Swift at scoring position at second base. Our shortstop, Nico Reutis, trying to sneak in behind him. A look back there by Arvidsson, the pitch! Oh, I wish he hadn't swung because it would have hit him. Two and one. What that one was was a curveball that looked like it was coming over the plate. That got Louie to start that swing. And it curved down inside and kind of hit his left foot and ankle, but he had already swung at it. Pitch, swing and a miss. 2-2. Two, two. <laughs> one out, Swift at second. Vaughn on deck. Down one to nothing here in the bottom of the first. Fouled into the net right side. Still 2-2 two, two for Alonzo. Louis, kind of the silent glue that helps hold this team together. 
You know, I was about to say when when Louis has a good game, the team has a good game. That's not really true. The team has had some bad games in which Louis performed very well. I don't remember a bad game from Louis. He stops him. He throws him out. He hits 408. Time called. Cedar Park dugout giving their pitcher Arvids in the business for it. Meanwhile, Alonzo is still waiting his next 2-2. Here it comes. Chop foul left side. Still 2-2. Here comes pitch number seven of the at-bat. Now, in a few minutes, I'm going to be joined on the broadcast by a good friend of mine. I've known him for 10 years. He's been helping me out on the broadcast crew for Cedar Park football, Cecil Kokenauer. Coming to do a little bit of baseball with me tonight. Looking forward to that. Louie calls time and steps out. Still 2-2. Sunset tonight, something like 8-20. We're a long ways from that. Way outside, actually, a, a nice stab grab by Matt Schindler, the catcher. Count runs full to Louis Alonzo. That jumping stab by Schindler kept Cedar Park from having the tie and run at third base. Comes a full count pitch. Eighth pitch of the at bat in the dirt, and Alonzo's at first. First and second for the cleanup hitter and pitcher, Adam Vaughn. Vaughn, not only one of the best pitchers in Central Texas, you look at his batting stats. 32 official at-bats, 14 hits, 8 singles, 5 doubles, a home run, 12 RBIs, been hit 3 times. Batting 438. Highest batting average on the team. Molinaro was running for Alonzo at first. Just no ground balls in the infield here with one out and runners at first and second. There's a fastball. I haven't seen too many of those from Arvidsson. He's mainly a thrower of crooked pitches called strike one. Coach had two apparently wildly different lineups, whether they went with a righty or this lefty. Of course, he's got the lefty facing lineup in. Swing and fouled into the net. Oh, and too quickly to Adam Vaughn. Takes the signals from head coach Lanny Williams at third. High and outside. I always found it interesting that at the professional levels of baseball, the head coach is called the manager. In all the minor leagues and in the majors, in all scholastic baseball, college, high school, they're called the head coach. Another weirdness about coaches, managers, and baseball is the only sport that I can think of where the manager or the head coach is wearing the same uniform as the team. This one, I think Schindler surprised himself they stopped that one. It's low and in, two and two to Vaughn. I think he got crossed up that time. He's going to talk a little bit with his pitcher, Brandon Arvidsson. And here comes Coach, too, to talk about it. Ah, it's part of the advantage of... Hmm. Well, coach wanted to come out and see if he was injured, so he's throwing a couple of pitches here to see if he can work through the injury. Appears to be okay. Air coach is talking over with the umpire. You might have noticed in the pregame, got four umpires. Just like we did the last two district games. We had two in every game this year. I know they start bringing in extra umpires in the playoffs. We've experienced that every year. But not sure why they went to four for the last two district games. All right, back to the action. Two and two the count to Adam Vaughn with one out. 
Swift at second, Molinaro running for Alonzo at first. Here's a curveball that misses inside. Another full count, second in a row for Cedar Park hitter. It's already going to be the 20th pitch. Now the catcher is coming over to talk to coach again. Maybe it's the catcher who had gotten hurt and not the pitcher. Might be it. He was kind of surprised on that pitch that was low and inside and came out and talked to the pitcher. Might have done something or sprained something on that pitch and the throws by their pitcher were not necessarily working out an injury for the pitcher, but, but for the catcher. So it looks like they're going to bring in another catcher. Since I don't have a roster for the Dripping Springs Tigers, I have to hope that Chris Wohl up in the press box is able to spot who this is. If they gave him a roster. And let us know who the new catcher is. Nice round of applause from all the fans here. The hurt catcher and good luck, Chris. I'm not sure what that number is underneath that chest protector harness, but it's going to not be Ma Matt Schindler, and maybe that's all I'll be able to say when referring to the Tigers catcher the rest of the night. Great stop by not Matt Schindler. I guess that works. Now, so you start thinking right away, do you test this guy on the base paths? Little Kansas on the overhead noise. Bomb in the first, little break in the action here as they change catchers. It's like Matt Schindler managed to get injured somehow. Right in the middle of Adam Vaughn's at bat. Was hurt on the 2 2 pitch. It's now 3 2. Full count to Vaughn. A called ball here loads the bases with one out for the Timberwolves. It is a called ball. Pushes Swift to third. Alonzo's runner, Molinaro, goes to second. Vaughn is aboard with the walk. Here's Christian Pickens, five hole hitter, playing right field tonight. Good Pickens numbers 72 plate appearances, 65 at bats, 21 hits, 15 singles, four doubles, a triple, a home run. 12 RBIs, scored 18 runs, one of the high numbers on the team. Been hit once, batting 3.23 coming into tonight, Christian Pickens. First five batting averages for Cedar Park, pretty good. 395, 412, 408, 438, and 323. Check swing. Run comes home as the ball gets away from the new catcher, and that's the kind of thing that happens to you when you pull in your sub catcher, and Cedar Park ties it as Swift scores from third. Alonzo goes to third. Vaughn to second, 1-0 and count to Christian Pickens. Still just one out. Brady Richardson DHing tonight. He is on deck, and then Quint Mullen, the third baseman. Swung on and fouled over the net to the right field of the softball area, 101 to Pickens. Boy, big crowd tonight, as befits two playoff games. Two really historically good programs with good followings. The pitch, swing and a miss, 1-2 to Pickens. That was a fastball. I would say that of the uh, 25 or so pitches he's thrown, only about six or seven of them have been fastballs. Motion on almost everything. That one kind of curved back in over the plate, but high as it started inside to Pickens, two and two. Swung on and lifted into shallow left. A tag up, see if they send him. It's going to be caught. No, it's going to drop in. The run scores. The wind just beat that down. It ends up being an RBI double for Pickens. 
Alonzo's runner Molinaro scores. Vaughn goes to third. That ball looked like it was going to be an easy fly ball to shallow left. The wind just kept blowing it back towards shortstop. The left fielder Aiden Dennis couldn't catch up with it. It was up so high that Pickens ends up at second base. Still just one out. Two to one now Timberwolves. Timberwolves. Designated hitter number 13, Brady Richardson. Brady Richardson, the DH tonight. In to hit now in the sixth spot with one out. Runners at second and third. That's Vaughn at third, Pickens at second. So Vaughn's runners ball now. This one well high. 1-0 to Brady. Look at Brady's batting numbers this year. 41 at-bats, 9 hits, 8 singles and a double, 7 RBIs. He's scored 8 runs, been hit once. Batting 220 coming in. Brady Richardson. Pitch fouled into the net. 1-1 to Brady. Quint Mullen is on deck. Brooks Dillman in the hole. Richardson the 6-hole hitter. Crippen Springs sent five in the top of the first. Richardson calls time and steps out. Wants to go through the signs again. Coach Williams does so. Brady steps back in. Ready for his 1-1. Here it is. Shows Bunt. Bunts it back to the mound. The run scores. Pitcher goes to first with the play for the out. Richardson gets a sacrifice, bunt RBI, 1-3 on the putout. Vaughn scored, it was a squeeze bunt, running with the pitch. Pickens makes it to third. Now batting for the Timberwolves, third baseman number 15, Quint So here's Quint Mullen, two outs now, 3-1 to one Timberwolves. High and outside. One and oh to Quint Mullen. Mullen into the night on offense. 42 at bats, eight hits, six singles and two doubles, nine RBIs. This one sliced foul to the right side into the net. One and one to Quint. Walked once, struck out nine times, comes in the night hitting 190. I know that batting average had been lower than that. It's just steadily climbing. 1-1 one, one the count to Mullen. Swing and a miss, 1-2. Cedar Park, a really dangerous team when they can get productivity out of the bottom four in the order. Tonight, that's Richardson, who just got an RBI on a bunt. Mullen here, and then Brooks Dillman and Ethan Becker. Becker kind of like a second leadoff as that one is out. Side and high, two and two to Quint Mullen. Becker's hitting 396 in the nine hole. Here's the 2 2. Swung on, stays alive, still 2 2. Fouled it back to the net. What a great crowd, and now that the sun is starting to set, shadows are long, not near as hot as it was, ooh, just even 30, 40 minutes ago. Very comfortable out here. There are a few seats left if you're watching and want to come out to the park. That one in the dirt, nicely blocked by not Matt Schindler. Full count to Quint Mullen. Third batter of the inning out of seven that have seen a full count from Brandon Arvidson. Most pitchers, or excuse me, most high school coaches will throw who they consider their ace in game one to try to take that all important one nothing lead in a best two of three series. Arvidsson may be their best pitcher, but he's struggling. Foul into the net. Still a full count to Quentin Mullen. Here comes pitch eight of the at bat and really rang up the pitch count on Brandon Arvidsson here in the first. He is close to, if not over, 30 pitches already here in the first inning. Long wait from Arvidsson. Here's the full count pitch. Driven over the shortstop's head. Another run will score. 
RBI single to left for Quentin Mullen. The Cedar Park fans go nuts. Pickens scores from third. Still two outs. Four to one Timberwolves. To the plate, the eight hitter. Center fielder Brooks Dillman, perhaps the fastest guy on the team. So Mullen at first with two outs, four to one Timberwolves in the bottom of the first, eighth batter of the inning and of the game for Cedar Park, center fielder Brooks Dillman. Dillman's numbers, 26 at-bats, five hits, four singles and a triple, two RBIs. He scored 24 runs. He tries to bunt, misses it 0-1 to Dillman. Far and away the most runs on the team. Well, not far and away, but is the most runs on the team. Even with few at he's only got 26 at-bats, he's got 24 runs because he is often inserted as a runner for pitchers and catchers because of his speed. Line foul over the third base dugout, 0-2 to Dillman. Comes in hitting 192. So the lesser part of the order batting average, 6-7-8 tonight, Got a sacrifice bunt RBI and a single RBI. The first two guys. Dillman here is the third. I tell you, I was starting to say, when Cedar Park gets productivity out of this part of the order, 6 7 8, they are a dangerous team because the next uh, six hitters in a row are 396, 395, 412, 408, 438, 323. There's a nice pitch for a strikeout. Only strikeout of the inning. And Cedar Park is down, but they send eight to the plate. They score four on three hits, two of them doubles, and a sacrifice bunt and two walks. And through an inning of play, 4-1 Timberwolves will be back in a minute. Centex Material Handling is a family-owned and operated business located in Central Texas. Since 2011, they've supplied outstanding commercial equipment and industrial solutions for businesses throughout the Southwest. They pride themselves on the reputation they've established over the years. Whether your company needs industrial cranes, conveyor systems, a turnkey material handling system, or various storage equipment options, Centex Material Handling is a one-stop shop with step-by-step -step consultancy before, during, and after every project to ensure they meet any and all of your business needs. Centex Material Handling looks for to working with you. All right, Brad Cohn here bringing you the action from Jay Severe Field, Matt Ariano Park in Cedar Park in the playoffs. Four to one after one inning of play. I feel a little more comfortable. But comfortable is not something you can get in this sport. We've been there before, haven't we? So now we go to the top of the second. Dripping Springs at the play. Aiden Dennis, six hole hitter, left fielder, will bat first. Then the DH in the seven hole, Sam Agajaniah, Gazunheit. And the catcher, Matt Schindler, not Matt Schindler, I should say. Maybe we'll get his name then. First one misses 1 0, and of course the dugouts will try to out, out annoy each other. Fouled back in towards the net. One and one to Dennis. More fans showing up, trickling in on both sides of the stands. People lining the fences between the edge of the stands and the dugout. Swing and a miss. One, two. Remember. Vaughn struck out the last two batters of the first inning on three pitches each, which means the moment. Eight of the last nine pitches have been strikes. It's after that RBI double. Let's make that nine of the last ten and the third strikeout in a row by Adam Vaughn. Now batting for the Tigers designated hitter number four, Sam Agajaniah. One down for the DH, Sam Agajaniah.
from the stretch. Vaughn. A little high, maybe outside as well. 1 0. Interesting. Uh, the nickname for Dripping Springs all these years has been the Drips. They don't take it derogatorily. If you get a shot on the camera, close enough, swing and a miss, 1 1. See the front of their jerseys. Guess what it says? Drip. Pretty good. Got to applaud him for that. Oh, right down the tube for, for a sleepy umpire. Boy, umpire missed that one. Called that a ball. Perfect pitch right down the tube, right at the knees. But two and one officially. That one was actually low. Three and one. More fans showing up, even bringing babies with them. Comes a 3-1 inside count corner, and it's a full count now to Agajaniah. What a great name. Sam Agajaniah. Agajaniah, Agajaniah, Agajaniah. It could be a song. Swing and a miss. He swung after it was already in Alonzo's glove. Four straight strikeouts for Adam Vaughn. So here we go. Finally identify the catcher. I don't have to say the catcher, not Matt Schindler. Carter Gardner. So two down now. Swing and a miss. Said he tipped it, actually. The umpire did. But effectively a miss. There's another called strike two. A strike away from striking out the side and the last five Dripping Springs batters in a row. After a slow start with the first three hitters, Adam Vaughn has woken up. Swing and a miss and he did it. Strikes out the side in the second and five consecutive for Adam Vaughn. Middle of the second inning, 4-1 Timberwolves. They'll be up when we come back. Chances are, whether you were born and raised in Central Texas or just moved to the Austin area, you purchased a vehicle from the Cover Auto Group or know someone who has. Since 1909, with the opening of the first automotive dealership in Central Texas, Cover has taken pride in maintaining its position as Austin's leading auto group, now operating under its fifth generation of family members. With over 14 franchises in seven locations, Cover continues to provide an unmatched total vehicle experience for the surrounding areas. Come to Cover for your Cadillac, Buick, or GMC automobiles. Okay, back at the ballpark now. Brad Cohn, Shane Jowinski helping me out as the QA. Thanks, Shane. Expecting Cecil Kokenauer at some point to join us. My football broadcast teammate. We've been working on trying to get Cecil to do some baseball with me for a number of years. As it happened, Cecil's a a coach of both of his son's youth teams, and they play Tuesday and Friday nights. So it's hard for him to do this. No game tonight for either of them. So he's trying to make his way here. The Cedar Park will be at 9-1-2. That's Ethan Becker, Kate Davis, Julian Swift. You look at Adam Vaughn's night, it's like he didn't quite know what time the game started. Walk the first guy and he scores. Gave up a sacrifice bunt. Then an RBI double to the wall in right center. After that, nobody's even touched the baseball. Five straight strikeouts. The lefty Arvidson for the Tigers. 39 pitches in the first inning. 24 strikes, 15 balls. Gave up three hits, four runs, two walks. Struck out one. Here's Becker, the left fielder, into the night hitting 396. As we said, he's kind of like our extra leadoff hitter down there in the nine spot. High and outside, 1-0 to Ethan. 
In contrast, the 39 pitches in one inning from Brandon Arvidsson. Our guy Vaughn's thrown 31 and two. Fastball on the inside, a called strike one. Cedar Park fans kind of off to the right side, didn't see that, but I could see it from here. It was a strike, it was a good call. That one high and out, same place as the first pitch, two and one. And that's kind of been the story with Arvidsson here. He's either thrown some good pitches right in the strike zone or he's missed wildly. It's not been much close. Up oh, there's the exotic bird noises coming from way outside. That's a bender that stayed high and out. Three and one to Becker here, leading off the bottom of the second. Something good about having for Cedar Park, according to the birds. Up, oh, not there though. It's a called strike on a pitch that was high and outside. That's why you got to wait for the call, even though you know it's high and outside. You don't know that the umpire will understand that. He may call a strike. Now the strike zone gets wider. Fouled it into the net to stay alive. Here comes pitch number seven to Ethan Becker. Pitch number 46 of the game for Brandon Arvidsson. He won't be able to last. At this rate, he'll get to 100 pitch count by the end of the fourth inning. Hopefully we can keep him going at this rate. That one's low. Becker to first, and he becomes a 77 percenter leadoff walk in an inning. Top the order for the Cedar Park Timberwolves, first baseman Cade Davis. Davis came into the night batting 395 grounded out good play by the third baseman Aiden Perry first time up Perry in on the grass expecting him if he pushes it that way to not go expecting a bunt misses the bunt catcher misses the ball and you get the benefit of a runner moving to second without an out so it's like a non-sacrifice missed bunt instead of a sacrifice executed bunt 0-1 oh the count to Davis. Swing and miss, 0-2, oh but now at least he knows he doesn't have to bunt. Down the count, 0-2 oh now. Becker in scoring position already at second with no outs. Pitch, high and in. Almost knocks him down. Davis now 1-2. and two. It was a 1-2 and two count that he hit on the ground a third last time. If he does, third baseman Perry will probably hold for a minute to make sure that Becker didn't come from second. Swing and a miss, and the ball's in the dirt, so he'll have to throw down to consummate the strikeout, and he throws it away. And Becker goes to third as well. So Kay Davis lives on the D3K, the drop third strike. Now batting for the Timberwolves, shortstop number 24. Becker to third. Julian Swift to the plate. Swift comes in hitting 412. Better than that now. One for one with a double deep to left. The first time up, and he later scored our first run of the game. The pitch cranks his left leg a little bit on that swing. Fouls it into the net on the right side, though. 0 and 1. First time through the order. It's an important stat that we've tracked for a couple of years. Only three of the nine batters from Cedar Park start out 0-1 against Brandon Arvidsson. And we got those kind of results, too. Swinging chop foul towards the drip dugout. 0-2 now to Swift. Swift has only struck out three times all year and 101 trips to the plate. Less than 3% strikeouts, but 0-2 oh here. Low, nicely blocked by the catcher, not Matt Schindler. Yeah, what's his name? Carter Gardner. Wrote it down in the batting order. I need to write it down in my defensive chart. 1-2 and two to Swift. Long wait in between pitches from Harvinson. 
This one well outside. The runner goes to second. No throw down. He was trying to entice the throw. That was Davis so that Becker might cut for home. Got no throw. Pitch was a called ball. Two and two to Swift. High, but fouls it into the net. Probably swung at ball three there. Still two and two. Swift likes him high, though. Gets his power that way a lot of times, I know. No outs. Davis at second. Becker at third. Up four to one here in the bottom of the second. Stays alive with a foul in the plate area. Still two, two. And, of course, nobody better go anywhere. Feeling kind of comfortable with the way things are going right now. But remember, this year we have lost games that we led 7-1 to one in the fifth and 9-1 to one in the fifth. So 4-1 to one in the second means absolutely nothing. Oh, did he go? Yes, he did. Couldn't quite keep it from Swain. Only the fourth strikeout of the year for Julian Swift. Here's Louis Alonzo. Technically, the pitcher Arvidsson has struck out the last two batters. Davis lived on a drop third strike, though. Here's Alonzo, comes in hitting 408. This one popped up right field foul territory, chasing it, has room, can't get it. He overran it. Parker Cook trying to make a stab at it. Just a tall strike one to Louis Alonzo. One out now. Supar trying to expand that 4-1 lead to 6-1. They got two runners in scoring position. Becker at third, Davis at second. 0-1 to Alonzo. Lowry gets off the catcher's mask and a run will score. Becker comes home off of that miscue. Davis goes to third. One and one the count to Louis Alonzo. It's now five to one Timberwolves. Adam Vaughn on deck, Christian Pickens in the hole for Cedar Park. Alonzo's going up the line to talk to coach about something. In the background you hear some sort of organ version of Van Halen's Jump, which is my theme music in our intro and outro. Conference is over. Louie back to the plate area. Getting set for his 1-1. Will they try another suicide squeeze? Not on this pitch. Swing and a miss. 1-2 to Louie. Louis has such a pretty swing. No wonder the guy's hitting 408. From the stretch, Arvidson. On the ground, pass third in the left. The run will score. Louis rounds first, but hits back. Gets an RBI single to left. Cedar Park now leads six to one. K. Davis scoring from third. Cedar Park putting on a good clinic with one, two, three, four hits now and a couple of sacrifice bunts. Adam Vaughn to the play. Comes into the night hitting 438 in the cleanup hole. Walked and scored the first time up back in the first inning. This one on the inside edge for a called strike one. Still just one out. Nobody in scoring position now, but Alonzo's at first. And there he goes, a run for Alonzo. The throw is in time, and they got it. 
a nice throw down, gets Houston Molinaro, and he's got good speed. So Carter Gardner, who's had some miscues since spelling Schindler on the plate, makes a good play there. Two down, nobody on. Count 1-1 one, one to Vaughn. Inside, blocked by Gardner, 2-1. You wonder what the, spitch, the, the speed that Molinaro has, if he maybe just didn't get a very good jump on that one. He's out by a mile, and he's got great speed. High and outside, three and one. I just heard the emus cackling again beyond the left field fence. Well, I've been doing this a long time, I guess. I remember when that area behind left field between the scoreboard and the foul pole High and out. Vaughn is aboard. Second walk of the night for Adam. That all used to be kind of uh, empty of vegetation. You could see into that lot back there that housed the emus and peacocks. Now it's uh, pretty tall with trees and greenery. Different look than it had back when we started doing this two decades ago. How could it be that long ago? Time flies, especially when you're getting old. Each day, I'm another day closer to my imminent death whenever that's going to be. And that's true for all of us. Now, I don't want to get that morose, especially when we're up 6-1 to one here. Trying to add to it. A little conference up the line with Coach Williams. Vaughn at first. Pickens awaits his first pitch. Comes in hitting 323. He's the end of our six hitters in a row. That's our murderer's row in the order. Had an RBI double and scored a run. First time up in the first inning. High and out. Most of the misses by Brandon Arvison have been high and out to right-handed hitters. 1-0 to Pickens. I gotta remember to keep checking my to throw over to first my machine for messages from you, Shane, because for whatever reason I can't seem to fix it. I have to reboot my phone or voice, whatever. It's not making a little vibrating noise that tells me I'm getting a text message, so be a little patient with me if you send one. The pitch low and it gets away from the catcher. Runner goes to second, thinks about third, but goes back. We are running for Adam Vaughn since he's the pitcher. I didn't catch who they put in. Might be a Garcia. Augie's playing second. Could be Ian Garcia. Pitch was a ball to Pickens. 2-0. I'm going to say that's Garcia, Ian Garcia at second. Low and inside now, 3-0. and oh. This is the 16th batter that Brandon Arvidsson has faced. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 of those 16 have gone to a 3-ball count. He is throwing an awful lot of pitches. 39 in the first. We'll give you a count at the end of the inning of what, is, what it is here in the second. There's a called strike on a rare fastball. This will be pitch 32 of this inning. Uh, did he cut? Yeah, I think he did. It was inside. Would have been ball four. Full count, though. So he's already at 71 pitches, and we're not even through the second inning. Runner going to third. Swing and a miss, and it gets through. He'll be able to get to second on the second strikeout that Brandon Arvidsson won't get technical credit for. Second time in this inning. They are missing Matt Schindler. So Vaughn's runner Garcia is at third. Pickens is at first. Two outs for Brady Richardson, the DH. Tripping Springs coach comes out to talk to his infield defense in the battery. He says, you know, We've already got four outs in this inning. Only got credit for two of them. A 
once better focus. And that's it for Arvidsson. Likely Arvidsson is their ace. So a new pitcher going to warm up. We'll see if Chris Wohl behind me can identify it for you. The batter will be Richardson. He comes in hitting 220 as the DH in the six hole. Had an RBI sacrifice bunt. Thrown out 1-3 the first time up. This guy's a righty, so the batters for Cedar Park have to make that adjustment. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention please. Now pitching for the Tigers, number 12, Travis Moran. Travis Moran. Moran, I think it is. Not as tall a guy. Throws right-handed. Compared to Arvidsson, about the same kind of speed. Haven't seen a lot of benders yet. There's something that started in and tailed out. It's a whole different kind of pitcher now. Try to stem the Cedar Park Tide. Got a shot here, leading six to one in the second to make it seven to one. Got a runner third here. We got runners at the corners, and they're talking about me again. Streamed live on Vike USA. Pre-game show starts 15 minutes before the scheduled start time of every game. So tune in and never miss a pitch of Timberwolf baseball. Thanks, Chris. And this year, that's actually true. This is the first time we've carried every single game. This, by the way, sets a record. That Georgetown game, if you want to call that a game, a week ago tonight right here, tied the record for the most broadcasts of Cedar Park baseball games in one season at 27. We're at 28 now, the most we have ever done in a single season. Now batting for the Timberwolves, number 13, Brady Richardson. So the new pitcher, Travis Moran, will face Brady Richardson, his first batter. Brady's second trip, again, comes in hitting 220. Had an RBI sacrifice bunt that the pitcher fielded last time up, threw him out at first. Well executed. Made it where the pitcher's only play was first. From the stretch with runners at the corners and two outs. And this is driven to center field, but right at the center field. One pitch for Moran. And it's an out. Richardson hits it well with a bad luck to hit it right to the center fielder. But Cedar Park, they sent eight in the first, sent seven in the second, scored two more runs or two drop third strikes, two walks and a single, and one RBI. They now lead after two complete, six to one. We'll be right back. With ASI Protection Services, it's always safe. It's that simple. ASI Services provides commercial and residential alarm monitoring services. ASI does the install and monitoring for way less than the large security chains. They've been in business for 21 years. ASI also offers home automation services, repair services for access control, alarms, and CCTV, plus security camera installation and repair. That's ASI Protection Services. Call 512-467-2615. And so Arvidsson, likely the ace of their staff, doesn't last two innings. Gives up one, two, three, four hits, six runs, walked four, had two drop third strikes occur. And officially struck out just two. Kind of really did four. They are at 9-1-2 in the order here in the top of the third. Right fielder Parker Cook starts out as the last man in the game to take his first at-bat. Here at 7.54, we've been playing two minutes short of an hour. First pitch from Vaughn misses, 1-0. Second pitch, a called strike one, kind of curving across the middle of the plate, right to left. From Adam's point of view, 1-1. Lead off Nick Reuter, shortstop is on deck, swing and a miss, one, two, and one more strike here. And Adam will have struck out six in a row for the Tigers. Here comes a one, two. Chopped foul to the right side. 
First base coach makes the grab. Still 1-2. My son-in-law, Brian Carlson, who's 30 years old now, the class of 2010 from Dripping Springs, was a relief pitcher for three years on varsity for the Tigers. There's a strikeout. Six in a row. I would have invited Brian to come on with me for this series. He knows baseball. He's not afraid to talk. But uh, Brian and my daughter Taylor are living in Washington, D.C. these days. Top the order for shortstop Nico Roitas. Both of them doing really well. Brian selling corporate insurance programs to companies. This one's a line drive into right field. Fielded by Christian Pickens and breaks the string of strikeouts and puts their third yeah, runner uh, of the game on base. Only their second hit of the game. So the one hitter is done. Shutout's already done. Here's Aiden Perry. And a sacrifice bunt. Fielded 5-3. Mullen to Davis first time up. That one misses 1-0. One oh. That one misses 2-0. and oh. Only the second batter of the game to go to more than one ball called in the count against Adam Vaughn. Make it three. Adam has struck out six in a row and a first pitch single to right. Seems to have busted his concentration. Three straight balls. Got to get refocused, Adam. Lights are on here. No more sunlight touching the field. It's still in my eyes off to the right for a few more minutes. There's a called strike one. Three and one to Aiden Perry. Throw to first. Our first of the game. They've done it once. Pitch fouled into the third base dugout. From 3-0 now to a full count to Aiden Perry. Just need a strike. One down. Runner at first. I didn't put that one out on the scoreboard. There we go. That's why I need a producer. Here's the pitch. Swung on and popped. Foul back over our heads. Still a full count. Here comes pitch number seven of the at-bat. Brandon Arvidson, the pitcher, scheduled next. We'll see what they do there. Inside and low, it's ball four. So Perry to first pushes Nico Reutas, who reached a single minute ago, to second. Second walk of the game given up by Adam Vaughn. Arvidson will stay in as the DH, so here comes Coach out to reset everything. Six straight strikeouts for Adam Vaughn, and then a single and a walk. Trying to press the reset button out there. One out here at 7.58. We've been going an hour and two minutes. Sun finally behind everything to the right. Twilight. Light's not helping much yet. It'll be a few minutes. Game two tomorrow, 1 o'clock on the road at Drip. We'll bring you that one. The same team that wins this game, wins that one, will be coming home after that. Swing and a miss. 0-1 oh to Arvidsson. He had an RBI double the first time up. Gave himself a 1-0 lead at the time. Was feeling pretty good. By about 20 minutes later, feeling lousy. He's now been knocked out of the game from the mound, anyway. It's a bender by Vaughn, but stays too high, one and one. Adam again to play D1 baseball. A&M Corpus next year. Swing and a miss. Harvison well underneath that one. I think he thought it was going to drop, and it didn't. Stayed about chest high. His swing was about belt high. 1-2 now. 
That's high. Probably in as well. Two and two. Had another one of those fantastic cheeseburgers tonight. Had lettuce, tomato, onion, ketchup, mayonnaise, and a fistful of jalapenos, jalapenos. Jalapeno cheeseburger, excellent. There's one on the inside edge. Strike three called, Arvidsson sits down. Seventh strikeout of the game and 14 batters for Vaughn. Two down. Now batting number one, Mason Ashlock. Mason Ashlock to the plate. With two outs, Ashlock the cleanup hitter, first baseman struck out, swing or looking the first time up, takes a called strike one here. With two outs here in the bottom of the third. Strike two. 0 oh, 2 to Ashlock. We're going to stay here between innings to kind of more officially welcome aboard the guy who's joining me on the broadcast. No! It's Cecil Kokenauer. There's a swing and a miss. Three strikeouts in the inning for the second straight inning. No runs across for Drippin Springs are through. Three complete. Six to one Timberwolves. How you doing? I am doing great, Brad. It's good to be here, man. Hadn't seen you since football. I know. It's been a little bit too long, dude. I am uh, sorry I keep keep missing these games, but my schedule just doesn't allow for it. I'm glad I can make it out here for this one. I know. You, you're coaching your two sons' club teams. Right. That's, that's not much you can do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Games on the same nights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've been trying to tell the audience when I said you were coming on earlier in the pregame. We've been trying to do this for years. We just couldn't do it. Worked out tonight. Yep, yep. Finally finally doing it, man. You look good, brother. It's the thank you, thank you. Yeah, I, I actually have. I'm the lightest I've been since the mid-1980s. Yeah, I like it. Good, good on you, man. Let me tell you a little something about this. This mouse will work. Where pitch count is, uh, no, I'm doing how many outs there are in the inning. There's the inning top three. We're now going to bottom of the three, so just mark it and bot three. Top is the way score. It's the bottom one. Okay. Thank you, Suna. Yeah. And the home, the bottom score, is the top one. <laughs> And that down there is just a little sign saying where we are at okay. Chase of your field. So got it. There I've got you where the, the outs will increment, we hope. Cedar Park's up 6-1 to one here. Adam Vaughn pitching, doing well. He had six straight strikeouts with one out in the third. He struck out the last two of the third after giving up a single to walk. They scored the first batter of the game. Haven't done much since. Cedar Park, lots of hits, lots of base runners, lots of runs. And they're pretty comfortable at the moment. We're at 7, 8, 9 in the order. That's the third baseman, Quint Mullen, taking the plate. And then center fielder, Brooks Dillman, and left fielder, Ethan Beckert. Mullen into the night, hitting 190. And an RBI single first time up on a full count pitch and was stranded at first. And I'll kind of show you. I'm, I'm, it's pretty logical how to do this, but it's not exactly the same as most people. I'll tell you how it is if you can't figure it out. First pitch to Mullen. Swung on and lifted to center field or deep short. Short's got it on the edge of the grass and makes the catch. One pitch, one out. A P6 for Quint Muller. Now batting for the Timberwolves, number 11, Brooks. Oh, Gilbert. where are you doing your outs again? Just over, type that, just type a one right there. Yeah. Dillman to the plate, comes in hitting 192, struck out looking at an 0-2 pitch the first time up. On the ground towards shortstop, bouncing ball to Nico Roydas across the diamond to Mason Ashlock, two down on two pitches. Not, given, give, not going to give Adam Vaughn much of a rest. Need oh. Becker to take a few pitches. Yeah, man. <laughs> Dude, I'm, I'm, I'm loving seeing this, man. My, uh, my son goes to, goes to high school. He'll be starting his, his uh, freshman year coming up next season. I can't wait for him to get into oh. this mix. That's hard to believe that's coming up already. Becker walked and scored the first time up. He's our second leadoff hitter down at the nine spot. Comes in hitting 396, takes a called strike one. So see, so my hash marks there are balls. Those are strikes. Those are strike two foul balls. A thing there means he started out 0-1, a little circle there. Back through the box. Shortstop grabs it, whirls 360, but throws it there. He wasn't going to beat him anyway. No. Dillman gets an infield single and goes to second on the overthrow, or Becker, rather. 
nicely fielded, but yeah, that, that was spin in the air. I think induced the throw. It was going to be late anyway. Yeah, he was he was moving to his left real real fast and had to spin around over there. Excellent excellent attempt at, the, at making the play though. I remember that guy from last year, Reuters. He is a slick shortstop. Top of the order with two outs. The first baseman, Kay Davis, into the night, hitting 395. Grounded out to third. Reached on a drop third strike and score. Had two drop third strikes by Drippin' Springs in the last inning season. Mm. On the ground to first. Down on it, over to the bag. To end the inning is Mason Ashlock. And let's keep it here again for a minute. So Cecil... Uh, Folks, you just have to listen to us here. Here's, here's a little tutorial on this so you can look over and see what's going on. Obviously, you can see the diamond mark here is that a guy had scored as a result of that at bat. The W for the walk, DBL for a double, D3K, drop third strike, K for strikeout, swinging backwards, K for strikeout, looking, STL for single, gets an RBI if it's written at the bottom. Sack B is a sacrifice bunt, and that's how the out was made, 1-3. Um, there's a guy with an infield single who's now at second. The circles are outs, and that way I can kind of look quickly and see all the outs at once, or see all the runs at once, or see all the hits yeah. at once. Yeah, man, you're too good at this. <laughs> it's, it's a little <laughs> different than been doing it most people. Yeah, <laughs> 15 years on k Mac or right now. So we're going to come back in the bottom of the fourth with two, three, and four at the plate. We'll now go to the top of the fourth with their five, six, and seven. Center fielder Taylor Tracy, left fielder Aiden Dennis, and the DH Sam. Here it comes, here it comes. Akatania on our all-name team already. Already. All of these guys do up. In fact, the next one, two, three, four, five guys up all struck out their first time up against Adam Vaughn. I, uh, man, I'll tell you what, Brad. I'm really looking forward to this football season coming up. I am too. I had Coach Q as a guest up here for a couple innings a few nights ago. And he's impressed with how spring football is gone. He thinks he's going to have a better team than he thought at the end of last year. This one on the ground. Well, no cover, cover. To first. First baseman gets yeah. it, but Vaughn forgot to get to first. Kay Davis grabbed it, had to go far to do it, so an infield single kind of on a fielding mistake that's not a scorable error now for Taylor Tracy. Three, yeah, that's a little slow roller. Pitcher's got to ro roll over there and cover. Aiden Dennis, the left fielder to the plate with no outs. Tracy at first. Dennis struck out last time up. You know, for years, Drippin' Springs would kind of call them the drips. Right. And it hadn't been taken derogatorily. Look at the front of their uniforms. Drip. Drip. <laughs> <laughs> they took it nicely. That's everything. Good. Everything there is drip. Dripping donuts. That's right. Oh, that place is good. Yeah, it is. We are there tomorrow. I suppose you can't come tomorrow, huh? No, I can't come tomorrow. <laughs> I can't come tomorrow. First it's actually one of my it's actually one of my rare, rare weekends off for both of my boys, so I gotta I gotta ah. get some house stuff done. Oh yeah. I have a field day. Yeah. Called strike one to Dennis, one and one. Good crowd tonight. This is probably one of our top three or four crowds of the year. As befits round one of the playoffs. Swing and a miss, one, two. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of people out here. I was pleasantly surprised. The uh, team has drawn crowds this size for four or five games this year. Usually the average is probably about half this number of people. Yeah. The good teams come in, big important games, and they fill it like this. Outside, 2-2. Two, two. Once again, Louis Alonzo behind the play. Defense left to right behind Vaughn, Quentin Mullen, Julian Swift, Augie Garcia, Kate Davis in the infield. That one's tapped to Davis, but foul. Still 2-2. Two -two. And in the outfield, left to right, Ethan Becker, Brooks Dillman, Christian Pickens. A lot of names you know from football playing baseball. Yeah, sure is. Sure is. I, I, it's nice to see them in a, in a different realm. Still 2-2. Two -two. Aiden Dennis. I can actually see their faces now, too. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I finally figured out, Murray Robinson's usually a DH, he's not tonight. Finally figured out what Murray Robinson looks like. <laughs> he usually eats quarterbacks, and, and this year he's eating pitchers. On the ground, Swift, backhand side, gets in front of it, goes it. second for one out. Not enough time to make the throw to first. Yeah, no Tracy need. forced out on the 6-4 at second. Yeah, no need, to, no need to force that and maybe to have a bad overthrow, man. You still got your force out at second here. 
Now batting for the Tigers. No harm four, done. Sam Agajaniah. He had no outs and run first. Now there's one out and runner first. Just a different runner. Here's Sam Agadaniah, Agadaniah, Agadaniah. I mean, you could, you could write a song to that. <laughs> it's got a nice rhythm to it. D.H. struck out swinging last time at a full count pitch. There's a nice bender to catch the outside edge. 0-1. Oh so, I-S-G-L, infield single. Swing and a miss after the ball was already in Louie's glove. 0-2. Oh Hagen Denaya really baffled by that one. Might have been the change. But had a little bit of a tail on it at the end though. Here comes 0-2, swing and a miss. Another strikeout for Adam Vaughn, two nice. down. That's big work. Nine strikeouts and he's faced 16 batters. No, ah, nothing wrong with that at all. Carter. 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 That's wrong efficient. Though. Carter Gardner, the catcher. In to spell Matt Schindler, the starting catcher in the first inning, got an injury of some sort, trying to block a pitch in the dirt, and he's been replaced. Gardner struck out swinging at a 1-2 pitch first time, fouls that one into the net 0-1. Not much of a lead at first by Dennis. What a nice pitch. Off speed with some motion on it, 0-2. One strike away from getting out of this inning, and we'll go to a commercial break. I've been cheating our sponsors the last two innings, so we're going to have to run a commercial. We'll get I'll, back. Show, I'll show you where those are. Uh -huh. That one misses high and in, one and two. And there it is, another strikeout, the 10th of the game to set the Tigers down scoreless in the fourth or through three and a half. And Cedar Park still leads six to one. We'll be right back in just a minute. Empire Home Solutions was founded on the principles of honesty, quality, communication, and integrity. They want to help you protect your home. They're proud of the industry they love and bring exceptional details to each job. When it comes to home repair or improving the exterior of your home or business, you can hire any old company or you can hire people who genuinely care about you. People with your best interests in mind and who educate their customers as well as they perform their jobs. People with with a conscience and a genuine desire to do what's right and do it the right way. And that would be Empire Home Solutions at 512-998-3372. The STEAM Team is a true Austin original. The only locally owned full service cleaning and catastrophe management company in the Austin area. The STEAM Team serves homeowners and businesses with a wide range of services, meeting both routine and emergency needs with prompt, expert, guaranteed service. Founded in Austin in 1983, the STEAM Team has built its reputation on performing beyond expectations with greater professional focus and personal involvement than its competitors. From initial consultation and planning through project management, catastrophe management, reconstruction, and restoration. The staff of the STEAM team is professional, dedicated, and enthusiastic. That's the STEAM team at thesteamteam.com. All right, Cecil gets the welcome here. How you doing? Appreciate How you it. like that? How you like that? Yeah, oh, I like that. Nice. Nice. Real nice. Short stop number 24, <laughs> Julian Swift. So here's Swift, the all-state shortstop. <laughs> Two, three, four, do here in the bottom of the four. Swift comes in hitting 4-12, doubled and scored the first time up, struck out, swinging at a 2-2 pitch the second time. Chopped foul, left side, barely foul. Oh, barely foul, that was close. Oh, I wanted to chew it. Yeah. Oh, did we get the information for the... Oh, uh, yeah, set it back up. already? Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much, thank you very much. Yes, sir. I forget to do that like, with no producer. I always, uh, not always, but I often forget to change that stuff and find myself catching up after they've already started. Yeah, that's a lot to, that's a lot to monitor. Oh, one is high, one and one. Swift, I don't know if you can see from there. 
Here's Julian's offensive numbers. Batting 412, on base at 480, slugging at 576, and OPA's a 1.056. Oh, and this one back over the box into the, almost the outfield. Another great fielding play by the shortstop to stop it. But of course, no time at all to get the Swift, Julian Swift. Yeah, that's a shot right goals. up the middle. Catcher number 19, Louis Alonzo. Louis Alonzo, the junior catcher. Third trip to the plate tonight in the three hole. Comes in hitting 408. A little better than that, Nye. Now, one for one and a walk. Scored a run and an RBI single in the second. Watch Alonzo's swing, Cecil. It's probably the prettiest swing on the team. Called strike one on Louis. And my God, what a cannon of an arm. He throws out about 90% of the people trying to steal second. A lot of them aren't even close. I've seen guys just stop running and not slide. They were out so far. <laughs> On the ground, two copper to the third baseman. The second pulls him yeah, off the yeah. bag. Umpire calls him safe anyway. It's the old area call that those of us who played baseball absolutely hate. Swift is forced out officially on a 5-4 play at second, so there's one down. Alonzo lives at first with the fielder's choice. Adam Vaughn, the pitcher to the plate. Yeah, that was a Running chopper, a little difficult for third baseman to, 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 to really get control of, but he was able to get it now through. batting number 25, Adam Vaughn. Their third baseman, Aiden Perry, has made a few good plays tonight. I'm, I'm liking him. Their shortstop has two. So here's Vaughn. Into the night hitting 438, best average on the team in the mm -hmm. cleanup spot. Walked both times he was up. Scored the first time, stranded a third the second time. Takes a called strike one. Low and outside, oh, runner going. goes. Catcher dropped the ball, so an easy steal for Alonzo's runner, who is, looks like it's Molinaro again. And, you know, in high school baseball, you can run for the pitcher, you can run for the catcher. You know, yeah, yeah. And they can still re-enter the game. So that's, that's uh, a guy uh, you've heard of, Houston Molinaro. Yeah, Molinar. Houston Molinaro, yeah. Great speed in football and on the base pass. Yeah, he's an excellent ball carrier. And very heads up on the base pass. Seeing that dirt, that ball in the, in the dirt. Third baseman will look him back, and he'll fake heading over to third. He'll get the out at first and go to second, chasing Molinaro, but he's back safely. Two down, Vaughn is out on the 5-3 play. A little check three, go one there. Push the runner back. He was going to take off, but he slipped in the slip a little bit. So he couldn't take off on the throw. I bet you with his speed, he definitely would have made that, made that, made it to the base before that throw came back from first. He's a right fielder. Christian Pickens comes in hitting 323. Adding one for two tonight, so that average is going up. RBI double and scored a run in the first. Reach on a drop. Oh! Strike, and this one's taken to center. Back and over to his right, though, and making the catch is Taylor Tracy. And the Timberwolves are down scoreless in the fourth without line out to center field. We'll be back in just a minute right after this. Bussy Roofing understands how important your home and business is to you and the significant investment involved for quality roof installation. As a reputable and professional roofing repair contractor, Bussy Roofing offers years of experience that includes a complete and comprehensive range of roof services that are designed to enhance curb appeal, provide energy efficiency, and increase the value of your business or commercial property. That's Bussy Roofing, Cedar Park Roofing, Roof Repair, and roof restoration. Visit them at bussyroofing.com. All right, welcome back to Jay Severe Field, Matt Ariano Park. Campus of Cedar Park High School. Brad Combs, Cecil Coconaut, bringing you the stuff here. Cedar Park leading 6-1 through 4 complete. We'll go to the top of the fifth, getting late already. They are at 9-1-2 in the order. Parker Cook, Nico Reutis, and Aiden Perry. And Look at the pitch counts through four for Adam Vaughn, as you see him warming up there. 67 pitches through four innings, 45 strikes, 22 balls, nine strike or ten strikeouts rather. Two walks, two hits, and a run. That ball strike ratio is silly. Oh, I know. the top of the the Tigers, number 10, Parker Cook. Parker Cook, nine-hole hitter, right fielder, struck out swinging at a one-two pitch to lead off the third, his only other trip. 
It's a called strike one from Adam. Adam Vaughn is going to go pitch D1 baseball at University of Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Okay. Nice. What a great place to have a weekend. Heck yeah. The beach is a couple of minutes away. Fouled into the net 0-2. Had a tournament in Corpus in March. Went down for three days and his college coach came and sat in the stands and watched him pitch a win. Oh, oh almost got the it. the glove off his hand. Second baseman grabs it over. Is it in time? Yes! Outstanding play by Augie Garcia to Kate Davis. Wow. A glove knocker offer. Vaughn may have slowed it down a little. So I'll have to call that a one, four, three. <laughs> Now batting Woo, top of the order, shortstop Nico Reutis. We haven't got him out yet. He's the only one. That'll wake you up, man. <laughs> hey. One down for Reutis, who walked and scored their only run. This one's popped up in the infield. Julian Swift calling for it at short, makes the catch. Two down on only four pitches here in the fifth. Now batting for the Tigers, number 11, Aiden Perry. Aiden Perry, left-handed hitter, third baseman. Had a sacrifice bunt that Quentin Mullen fielded at third the first time up. Then he walked in the third but was stranded at first base. Missed outside, 1-0. Oh. That one misses. 2-0. Oh. Now who would you who'd you bring with you? Oh, it's my my wife uh, Crystal and my uh, oldest son Avery. They're sitting right over here. Oh, I, I saw Avery standing here for a minute. He must join her. Huh? There's a strike two and one. Yeah, where, are they, we, where are they at? Uh, just right here by the lady in the oh. blue striped shirt. Okay. They, uh, that one a little bit high. Yeah, we wrapped up my uh, my other son's uh, batting practice tonight, and we jetted over here. Oh, you got a new jet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Three and one the count. It's a, it's a ram, but I make it fly. And a walk for Aiden Perry with two outs. What are his uh, What are his working speeds when he throws? Well, his main pitches are. He's got a couple pitches with weird motion on them, kind of a slider and a curve, and he has a wicked change that guys swing way early yeah, right. yeah. The Doesn't throw the fastball very often, but when he does, he throws it for a strike usually. I know. Spinner, I like that. That's, that reminds me of my boy Avery. Here's Arvidsson, the guy who started on the mound. We knocked him out of there in the second inning. They're now throwing Travis Moran, but Arvidsson was the DH as well, so he stays in hitting. Had an RBI double the first time up, but he was still feeling good about the game and had a one nothing lead. That ended quickly. Struck out looking at a 2-2 pitch in the third. That one misses 1-0. Oh. Inside. Cedar Park fans wanted it, but we could tell from here that was inside. 2-0 oh. Cedar Park with a symmetrical field. 320 down to the foul poles, 355 to the power alleys, 370 to center. That one fouled to the right side, two and one. I'll tell you what, this isn't a bad place to play baseball. It's a good it's looking a nice field. Little, nice little field. They keep it up well. Like all the trees behind the outfield. Mm -hmm. Longest home run I ever saw hit here was a guy who was right handed, batted left as that one misses, three and one for Midland Lee, and he hit it over those trees, and it bounced in the middle of Anderson Mill Road out there. Oh, wow. That guy was, oh, there's a line drive. Should go foul. Yeah, it does. To right. So a full count out for Arvidsson. That was uh, a guy that was a four-time All-State running back who played for the Texas Longhorns and is dead now. Oh. Go defense! I, the name escapes me. Oh, oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Uh, shoot. You'll come up with yeah, it. Yeah, I will. Oh, wow. But, yeah. That's a shot, dude. You remember, he wasn't even a scholarship football player. There's a walk. Yeah. Pushes Perry to second. At Texas, he didn't even take up 
a scholarship because he'd already made a lot of money playing minor league baseball, paid for his own college. Uh, I did not realize that. Yeah. Mason Ashlock. He was a good guy. Mason Ashlock, yeah. the first baseman, struck out looking, struck out swinging. I met him once when I, when I worked at Chewy's. A couple of those guys came in and ate, ate, ate dinner one night. Foul, back behind the plate area, 0-1. Cedric. Cedric Benson, Benson. Yeah. yeah. Cedric took, Benson. Took me a while, man. I <laughs> had, to, had to dig deep. Oh, and one to Mason Ashlaw. Foul to the screen, 0 oh and 2. Now, Jeff Kent, a Major League Baseball player for years who lives in Austin, his son plays for Lake Travis. He hit one that hit that left center field light pole about 25 feet up on the pole. <laughs> it was a monster Ooh. shot. Got all of that one. That was just last year. Foul back of the net. Still 0-2 to Mason Ashlock. Center fielder trailer, Taylor Tracy, rather, is on deck. Easy for you to say. Third crew mate as that one's fouled. Still 0-2 to Ashlock. Yeah, he's working this count up, man. He, uh, Look at the pitch count. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's what I mean. Um, he's all over it, though. Our third football crew mate, Josh Willard, he's doing my job, play-by-play -play baseball for Regents School, a private school, Southwest Austin. Don't know that they're in the playoffs or not. That one's low, nicely blocked by Alonzo. First called ball in five pitches to Mason Ashlock. The tradition here, Cecil, is that behind the left field fence, behind those trees, there's an exotic bird ranch, peacocks and emus. Mm -hmm. it's fouled into the net right side, still one and two to Ash Lock. And uh, they'll occasionally make some noises, and they're, they sound like a baby crying. You can hear them all the way from here. And historically, when you hear them, immediately something good happens for Cedar Park. Oh, yeah. It's really uncanny. Got him. Swing and a miss. Ooh. Got him. Another strikeout, the 11th of the game mm. for Adam Vaughn. Man, he had him reaching. They did. <laughs> Two walks in the inning go for nothing. We're through four and a half. Still 6-1 Timberwolves. We'll be right back after this. Centex Material Handling is a family-owned and operated business located in Central Texas. Since 2011, they've supplied outstanding commercial equipment and industrial solutions for businesses throughout the Southwest. They pride themselves on the reputation they've established over the years. Whether your company needs industrial cranes, conveyor systems, a turnkey material handling system, or various storage equipment options, Centex Material Handling is a one-stop shop with step-by-step -step consultancy before, during, and after every project to ensure they meet any and all of your business needs. Centex Material Handling looks for to working with you. All right, one of the film girls, Kaylin, is going down to get Cecil one of these famous cheeseburgers here at the Cedar Park concession stand. Cecil, these are some of the better burgers I've eaten, and it's just a high school baseball concession stand. I don't know what they do right. Hopefully, hey, you'll get a good hey, one. Hey, man, some of the, <laughs> some of the best stuff you find is at places stand. like that. We yeah. Hamburger left. We have oh, no. <laughs> I hope she gets it. <laughs> they just announced <laughs> that they only got one hamburger left. I hope Kayla <laughs> gets there. And enjoy the rest of the <laughs> She may come back and ask you what a hot dog or sausage right, right now. That'll work, too. That'll work, too. What they do right here, you can see in front of you, uh, with this iPad, they film every at bat for our batters and every pitch for our pitchers. And coach goes in and analyzes it between games. Okay, nice. Stick around after the game. We'll introduce you to our. Co well, you know him. It's Lanny Williams. Oh, yeah, 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 Lanny. Coach Brady Richardson. So Cedar Park now to the bottom of the fifth. Frank Irwin's favorite inning. It's an inside joke for you Longhorn fans. We're at six, seven, eight in the order. The DH Brady Richardson will bat first. Brady comes in hitting 220. Fouls it into the net right side, 0 1 to Richardson. Earlier tonight, he had an RBI sacrifice bunt, suicide squeeze bunt, well executed. And then he really hit it well, but lined out to the center fielder. Oh, wow. Started like it was going to hit him. Curved nice. just inside enough to get the inside edge, 0 2 to Richardson. 
I'll tell you what, this temperature drop, they gave me a better night for baseball. Yeah, it's nice. When, we first, when I was setting up, I was really sweating. Really hot out here. Ooh, almost hit him. Chin music. One and two. That's amazing. She got the last one. You got the last <laughs> one. All <laughs> right. You. Kaylin got it for us. Thanks, <laughs> Kaylin. Ooh. In the air. Third baseman comes up. Fair territory. Whoa. Ooh. Struggles with some wind, but makes the catch. Not the first good play in the field by Aiden Perry for Griffin Springs. Now batting for the Timberwolves, number 15, Quint Mullet. Quint Mullet, our third baseman. Comes in hitting 190. An RBI single to the left side. Was stranded to first and popped out to the shortstop. Quint's batting average in the in the zeros about four weeks ago. Steadily climbing now at 192. He's had some important hits. Had a game-winning hit a couple of weeks ago. First one misses 1-0. One oh. On the ground. Shortstop. Oh, he eats him up. The bat last bounce was a bad one. You know, I guess as a former middle infielder, I'd say I should have had that. I might have to give that an E. Yeah, yeah, that was a tough one. That I mean, it, that hop, you got to smother that though. Can't yeah. sit back on it. You got to get up there and attack that hop. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. Now batting for the Timberwolves, number 26. All right, Jackson Harvey. Jackson Harvey, nice. our normal first baseman. I was wondering why he wasn't in the lineup tonight. We have a different infield, but Harvey will bat in the eight hole for, or excuse me, the nine hole for Ethan Becker, the left fielder. Jackson's done a great job at first all year long. Had a lot of critical hits. It's tied with Swift for the team lead in homers with three. And he steps in. And I had that right the first time. Harvey's actually batting for Dillman in the eighth spot. Don't know what made me change my mind. First pitch misses 1-0. and oh. Becker's still on deck in the nine hole. Thought that was an interesting move to lift a 396 hitter for Harvey. Gets through. Runner gets second. That's Mullen. 2-0 and oh to Harvey. So Jackson Harvey is another guy you're used to hearing in football. Not a lot of offensive linesmen who play baseball. No, that's that's a that's a big boy. I'm sure he's got a got a big bat. What do you see, Big Burr get up there? Yeah. Maybe he'll get an at bat in this game. He can really tattoo the ball. Both of these guys can. High three and zero oh to Jackson Harvey. If they give him something to hit. If they give him something to hit, puts a lot of muscle in. He's got a lot of big long hits this year. Had a foul ball home run at Dripping or at. Uh, Liberty Hill. Nicely blocked by the catcher, but it's ball four to Harvey, and he's aboard. Ball at second, now one out. Number five, Ethan Nine Becker. hole hitter, left fielder Ethan Becker comes in hitting 396. Officially one for one with an infield single. He walked and scored the other time. Stay hot, kid. Getting the signals from Lanny Williams and steps in. Just one out. Mullen at second, Harvey at first. Pitch a little high, 1-0. Dripping Springs fans sitting on their hands since taking a 1-0 lead in the first inning. They're awfully noisy then. Not much reason to make noise since then. But they got Cedar Park right where they want them. Behind them, 6-1 late in the game. That's where Cedar Park loses. That one's a called strike, 1-1. Cedar Park fans didn't like that. I thought it was a strike. Looked like it from here. A little, little visit from the catcher. We get a better view of it, I see here. The fans that are way off on angles yeah. get a different angle and think things are strikes that aren't, that are over the plate that aren't. Carter Wall is our backup catcher. You remember him from football? 
His dad's a stadium announcer behind us. Okay. Pitcher backs off. Becker still waiting for his 1-1. Becker there at the plate. He's a football player. On the ground to short. No play at second. Goes across the diamond to first. Harvey. Wow, how did Harvey make there be no play at second? That's pretty good oh, speed in that yeah. situation. Yeah, it really is. That's because he had a he had a he had a pretty big lead over there. And, Must uh, have. Yeah, and that, that was that was a good. I like that hit and run call there. So kind of like a sacrifice bunt moves both the runners up to second and third, but you don't get credit for it in your batting average. Goes down as a six-three, two down, top of the order. K. Davis, two runners in scoring position, trying to make it eight to one. Outside. Davis comes in hitting 395 in the leadoff spot. Grounded out to third, reaching a drop third strike and scored, and then grounded out to first. So hasn't yet hit it out of the infield for a guy who hits a lot of them out of the infield. He's due. On the ground, but at second. We'll have a play at first. Makes that play and ends the inning. Oop, I forgot to mark that one out. With a 4-3 play. So we are through five complete. Score hasn't changed since the end of the second inning. Six to one Timberwolves. We'll be right back in a minute. Chances are, whether you were born and raised in Central Texas or just moved to the Austin area, you purchased a vehicle from the Cobra Auto Group or know someone who has. Since 1909, with the opening of the first automotive dealership in Central Texas, Cobra has taken pride in maintaining its position as Austin's leading auto group, now operating under its fifth generation of family members. With over 14 franchises in seven locations, Cobra continues to provide an unmatched total vehicle experience for the surrounding areas. Come to Cobra for your Cadillac, Buick, or GMC automobiles. With ASI Protection Services, it's always safe. It's that simple. ASI Services provides commercial and residential alarm monitoring services. ASI does the install and monitoring for way less than the large security chains. They've been in business for 21 years. ASI also offers home automation services, repair services for access control, alarms and CCTV, plus security camera installation and repair. That's ASI Protection Services. Call 512-467-2615. Welcome back to the baseball broadcast. Thanks, for, thanks again for getting me over here, Brad. Oh, I appreciate the help. This is uh, this is good stuff, man. A lot of fun to do. This is my tell folks earlier. This is a, a record setter broadcast. The most we've ever done in a season is 27. The very first year, 2008, and last year, 2021. This is our 28th this year. Oh wow! Been a lot of fun. First year we've done every single game. We're at the top of the six now. Five, six, seven, due for the Tigers of Dripping Springs, trailing six to one here in round one, game one, the Texas State UIL baseball playoffs. Your center fielder Taylor Tracy, first one misses low. Tracy, first time up, struck out swinging an 0-2 pitch, then had an infield single to the right side. That was when uh, Vaughn didn't cover first. Fouls it in the plate area, one-one. A fan over here, maybe a dad for Dripping Springs. You know, don't let him quick pitch. Wants a batter to take some time, step out and so forth. And, and that's a viable tactic against Vaughn. Vaughn pitches with a lot of pace. The pitches come quick. Well, strike. Strike two. Right down the gut. Checks his swing a little low. They appeal. He did check it. And it's rare tonight, Cecil, with four umpires. There's usually two in district games or non-district games. And uh, in the playoffs, he yeah. got four. And there's a swinging strikeout, the 12th strikeout of the game. He is dealing tonight. Interesting to see what's really working for him. He, he might be one of our – coach usually brings a guest or two. He's an offensive no, standout and a pitching or defensive standout to the postgame show. We'll see how, see who he brings this time. So one down here in the top of the fifth. Six-hole hitter, left fielder Aiden Dennis. Takes ball one. First time up, struck out swinging. Second time up, on with a fielder's choice as an out was made at second. 
He was stranded at first that time. That one high, 2-0. and oh. Almost chased it. He wanted it. A lot of tall hitters in the lineup for Trip. This is not one of them. Called strike one. Who did we play? We played some. Eastview had a like their entire infield. Even the first baseman was like 5'6", five, 5'7". Five, All these really short guys. Swung at that one. It's probably high and in, but we'll take it. Two and two. Oh, that breeze feels good. What's really weird, too, here, Cecil, over the years, the wind is always blowing in from left. 90% of the time it's in from left, like tonight. Hmm. Missed. Full count now to Dennis. Which is weird, because that's south. The weather patterns in this part of Texas come in from the northwest well, no, all the yeah. time. How is the wind always blowing from the south here? Oh, huh, that's interesting. There's a yeah. called strike three, sits him down. I don't got an answer for you, Brad. You need to talk to a meteorologist. Yeah, man, let's get David Yeomans over here. Three strikeouts in a row now here, dating back to last now back inning. Now the Tigers, number four, Sam Agajanaya. Thirteenth of the game for Adam Agajanaya. Vaughn. Agajanaya. Agajanaya, the DH. Sam Agajanaya. First time up, he struck out swinging. The second time up, he struck out swinging. He's a swinger. <laughs> 89 pitches. That's coming into this one, so... 9, 9, 1, 9, 2, 9, 3, 9, 4, 9, 5, 9, 6, 9, 7, 9, 8, 9, 9, 100. That was 101. Or that's 102. Big, that's big work, man. Still handling business. Cade Davis, who's playing first tonight, likely starter tomorrow. This is taken deep into center field. Chasing it, cuts it off for it, hits the wall, but he'll have a double. Mm, nobody's covering the base. It's Harvey has to come up from first to cut that ball off from center field. Second double of the night for Drippin' Springs. Only their fourth hit. And only the second since the now batting third batter of the game. Gardner. So a two-out double puts Agat Janaya to second base, the first man they've had in scoring position since the third inning. For Carter Gardner, the relief catcher. Called strike one. Oh, he missed it. One to know. Some part tonight has been pretty good, though. I've only disagreed with him on maybe four or five balls and strikes. That one gets through Louie, but not far enough for the runner to do anything with it. Two and oh. I've been itching to have a guy at first try to run on Louie Alonzo so we could show off his arm for you. Here's the 2 0. -oh. Called well. strike one. <laughs> Top part of the strike zone, inside edge of the plate. Yeah, I mean, just seeing his, his warm up throw down, I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a nice little cannon he's got. And on top of throwing it hard, back to Vaughn. Vaughn will take it to the bag. <laughs> little little gamesmanship right race, there. Little gamesmanship. <laughs> and a third out. You don't mark down very many one U's, but there you have it. We'll be right back with the Timberwolves at the plate. Swift in particular right after this. Empire Home Solutions was founded on the principles of honesty, quality, communication, and integrity. They want to help you protect your home. They're proud of the industry they love and bring exceptional details to each job. When it comes to home repair or improving the exterior of your home or business, you can hire any old company or you can hire people who genuinely care about you, people with your best interests in mind, and who educate their customers as well as they perform their jobs. People with a conscience and a genuine desire to do what's right and do it the right way. And that would be Empire Home Solutions at 512-998-3372. The Steam Team is a true Austin original. The only locally owned full service cleaning and catastrophe management company in the Austin area. The Steam Team serves homeowners and businesses with a wide range of services, meeting both routine and emergency needs with prompt, expert, guaranteed service. Founded in Austin in 1983, the Steam Team has built its reputation on performing beyond expectations with greater professional focus and personal involvement than its competitors. From initial consultation and planning through project management, catastrophe management, reconstruction, and restoration. The staff of the STEAM team is professional, dedicated, and enthusiastic. That's the STEAM team at thesteamteam.com. 
a new pitcher for the Tigers now, Mike Donatello. You can see him warming up, another righty. Third pitcher of the game for Cedar Park to solve. We're the bottom of the sixth now. Two, three, and four in the order for Cedar Park. That's Julian Swift, Louis Alonzo, Adam Vaughn. And before that third out was made, unassisted by Vaughn at the bag at one. Starting to talk about Louis Alonzo throwing people out. It's not just that he throws the ball hard. What do you see how little time the ball spends with him? It hits his glove and just seems to bounce to second base. His release is just incredibly quick. I love that. Both of my boys are catchers, and that's uh, something, something we worked on pop time. Sometimes he doesn't even stand up. He'll just roll forward on his knees. Yeah. Throw him out from his knees. Love it. So here's Swift batting in the two hole. Bottom of the six, trying to apply for some insurance on a 6-1 lead. We've not scored since the second. Swift into the night hitting 4-12. The All-Stater has a double. An infield single, he scored a run, he struck out the other time up. That was only his fourth strikeout of the season, Cecil, in, let me find it here, 104 trips to the plate. Wow. On the ground at shortstop, Reutas, acrobatic throw. Good grab by the first baseman as well, a little off the mark. Swift is out on the 6-3, one down. Now batting for the Timberwolves, number 19, catcher Louis Alonzo. Alonzo into the night hitting 408, walked and scored. RBI single to the left side, but was thrown out. His runner was thrown out, trying to steal second. Then he reached our fielder's choice in the fourth and was stranded at second. We have stranded one, two, three, four, five guys in scoring position, still leading six to one. Yeah, that's not the norm when you leave runners, uh, runners on base like that. So. And looking at the other side of the ledger, only five outs on Dripping Springs were not strikeouts. Outs by the defense. Adam Hall with 13 strikeouts. Adam Hall, Adam Vaughn. Oh, and that him. hits him in the left glute. Louis takes second. He didn't like that. He wanted he to hit. Master. He wanted to hit, not get hit. Let's see now if they will run for him. Yes, they will. They do, and that's Houston Molinaro again. And here's Vaughn. <laughs> is, that, is that who it is? Yep. I can tell from the song. Two walks <laughs> and a ground out to third. Damages his 438 average a little bit coming in, so two for a hit to bring it back up. Another throw to first. That's only their second of the night. I think they know the stat that we know is why we don't throw. Cecil, several years ago, I found a stat in, in high school, American high school baseball nationwide. One out of every seven throws to a base by a pitcher or a catcher is thrown away. So we started seven. tracking it since, and it's almost exactly dead on. Wow. It's almost one, two, three, four, five, six, and the seventh one's thrown away. <laughs> it's that's a, it's crazy. uncanny. I've never seen that. That's an interesting stat. I've never, even, I've never heard that before. I was telling Lanny that we don't throw the base that often anymore. We'll play teams that will throw 14 times and throw two of them away. 1 2 now, the count. Vaughn. There's Those two are one. costly, too. Yeah. <laughs> it can be very costly. A lot of times, the guy from first ends up at third because mm -hmm. there's nobody backing him up. It'll hit the fence and roll out well, in yeah. foul foot territory in right field. Take forever to chase down. 1 2. Three throws to first now for Dripping Springs. Runner goes. Catcher can't pick it up cleanly. Ooh, he's so fast. Stolen base for Molinaro. It's a little different, too, seeing him at 90 feet this close. Yeah. You know, it looks a lot different than seeing yeah. him being up in the press box at the gup. With football <laughs> helmets on and big old face masks and visors covering their face and pads on. Molinaro, well, all of them look a lot different without pads. Vaughn. Another offensive linesman playing baseball. Two of our starting O-linesmen start for the baseball team, a pitcher at first base. When Vaughn isn't pitching, he plays third base. Swing and a miss. 2-1. Four in the first, two in the second, nothing else for Cedar Park. One in the first for the Tigers, nothing else. 
Long look at second. A second long look at second. Fast ball catches the inside edge. Runner goes to third. Evens the count at 22 to Adam Vaughn, but Alonzo's runner Molinaro gets two head first slides in one running instance. I would have loved that. I love the head yeah, first that's slide. Yeah, that's fun. My washing machine didn't like it much. <laughs> Just easier to be safe that way. Instead of slowing yourself down, leaning backward, you're speeding yourself up. Fly ball, deep second base, shallow right field. Right fielder struggling with it, but makes He's the coming catch. Coming in, played home for third, but it's a good throw. Good, good throw. Play. Lanny held him and made him come back. Yep. Yep. Two down. That's a good throw by the right fielder. Really was. Well. Actually, it was even a good catch. The, the wind was really on the way down. The wind was really jacking with that ball. So two outs, Alonzo's runner Molinaro is still third. For the right fielder, Christian Pickens. I'll, I'll add good communication by the by the catcher too for the no cut. Indeed. Pickens into the night hitting 323, RBI double and scored a run. Reaching a drop third strike but was stranded. Lined out on a well hit ball to center. He is seeing it well. Two very well hit balls tonight for Christian Pickens. A 3.23 hitter. That's fouled towards the third base dugout. 0 and 1. So the burger was good, huh? Oh, you're still working on it. I'm still working on it. Yeah, I don't want, you know, me eating in everybody's ear. That's all right. I, I do that myself sometimes. So go ahead if you want to. Sometimes there's just no time to do it. That one misses low one and one. Take a couple batters off or something, you can wolf it down. <laughs> Sometimes when I'm eating while doing it, I'll say, strike one, <laughs> ball one, for a couple of batters in a row. This one's lifted high Oof. and foul, probably out of play to the left side. Lands in the visitor's bullpen. One and two with two outs. A strike away now for Mike Donatello. Getting out of this in four hitters. Well, three hitters and one hit E. Alonzo goes was pegged on the left hip. His runner's at third. Haven't gotten any runners in since the second. We've had several in scoring positions since then. Couldn't close the deal. Not going to do it here. This is a fly. Right fielder over to his right will make the catch and end the inning. Four to the plate. One was hit batsman. He was stranded third. We're through six complete. Last chance coming up for Drippin' Springs. Cedar Park leading 6-1. We'll be right back. Thunder Cloud Subs is a neighborhood sub shop with a rich tradition of good-natured people serving fresh, fast, and healthy food in a quirky and fun atmosphere. Founded in Austin in 1975, Thunder Cloud has the simple philosophy of selling a great sub at a reasonable price with superb ingredients. Scratch baked bread, meats, cheeses, and produce sliced fresh every day. All these ingredients come together to create the one and only Thunder Cloud Sub at Four Points and at 700 East Whitestone in Cedar Park. Southern Landscape of Austin. Established in 1982, Southern Landscape is a licensed and insured full-service landscape design and outdoor construction firm dedicated to building custom landscape and outdoor living spaces. For 40 years, they've specialized in features like custom landscape design, water features, vineyards, irrigation, hardscaping, patios, decks, arbors, retaining walls, fencing, outdoor kitchens, pools, fireplaces, fire pits, and lighting. Southern Landscape staff is comprised of full-time, licensed, bonded, and insured professionals who are passionate about their work. Call them today at 512-263-8450 or visit southernlandscape.com. All right, a new pitcher for Cedar Park here in the final inning. Well, we hope it's the final inning. It's Ethan Becker. Now, he was playing left. Looks like Houston Molinaro has gone into left. I also noticed that Christian Pickens has moved from right to center. So I'm not sure who is in, oh, I know who's in right. Cade Davis, who started the game at first. And our regular first baseman, Jackson Harvey, now at first. So actually a more normal looking lineup, except for the pitcher, for this final inning for Cedar Park. 
Well, we hope it's a fine inning. Tigers are at 9-1-2 in the order. Here's right fielder Parker Cook. These next five hitters one, two, three, four, five, six, are two for 14 tonight in the game. First one misses. Second foul territory. Might be playable for Harvey. He's chasing it, chasing it. Can't get to it. Big tall strike one. One and one to Parker Cook. Yeah, nothing, nothing, but a, nothing but a long strike there. Yeah. That's a tough one to handle, too. It kind of got caught up in the wind. Then you're looking at the fence. Notice a lot of them on the way down are giving people trouble tonight for both teams. Most of the plays have gone on to be made, but they're really kind of wobbly. The last 40 feet of the ball's drop. That one fouled back into the net, one and two to Cook. Nico Reutis, shortstop, top of the order, is on deck, and then third baseman Aiden Perry. Reutis has one of the two hits of the 14 previous at-bats for these next five hitters. Oh, Swing and a miss, another strikeout. This one goes to Becker. One down, two outs to go, top of the order for Dripping Springs. Number 22, Nico Reutis. Here's the shortstop, Nico Reutis. Walked and scored, singled, trained at second, popped out to short, Julian Swift. Here's their on one the ground run on the third. Adam Vaughn across to Jackson Harvey, two down. <coughs> one out away. Oh, nope, I thought Vaughn went to third because he's normally third. It's, it's still Tiger Mullen at third, so it's Aiden Mullen Perry. to Harvey for that out. Two down, Aiden Perry, the third baseman with nobody aboard. Sacrifice bunt to third, first time up. That one misses outside, 1-0. and Again, Cedar Park fans wanting it from their angle, but it was clearly outside. He walked the other two times up, was stranded both times. That one outside as well. It was closer than the other one that they were griping about. Two outs, 2-0 two to Aiden Perry. Cedar Park just needs an out. That might be it. Pop up, Swift, Mullen. Swift calls it, and that's the ball game. That's the game. Cedar Park wins 6-1. to one. This opening game of the first round, the by district Series, Texas State UIL playoffs. So let's see, so what we're going to do, we're going to go away while I tabulate some offensive stats and wait for a coach to bring a player up. And during this time, we play every one of our Ladies commercials. Okay. <laughs> so that's what we'll be doing right now. Stay tuned. We'll be back in a minute. Bussy Roofing understands how important your home and business is to you and the significant investment involved for quality roof installation. As a reputable and professional roofing repair contractor, Bussy Roofing offers years of experience that includes a complete and comprehensive range of roof services that are designed to enhance curb appeal, provide energy efficiency, and increase the value of your business or commercial property. That's Bussy Roofing, Cedar Park Roofing, Roof Repair, and roof restoration. Visit them at bussyroofing.com. Sentex Material Handling is a family-owned and operated business located in Central Texas. Since 2011, they've supplied outstanding commercial equipment and industrial solutions for businesses throughout the Southwest. They pride themselves on the reputation they've established over the years. Whether your company needs industrial cranes, conveyor systems, a turnkey material handling system, or various storage equipment options, Sentex Material Handling is a one-stop shop with step-by-step -step consultancy before, during, and after every project to ensure they meet any and all of your business needs. Sentex Material Handling looks for forward to working with you. Chances are, whether you were born and raised in Central Texas or just moved to the Austin area, you purchased a vehicle from the Cover Auto Group or know someone who has. Since 1909, with the opening of the first automotive dealership in Central Texas, Cover has taken pride in maintaining its position as Austin's leading auto group, now operating under its fifth generation of family members. With over 14 franchises in seven locations, Cover continues to provide an unmatched total vehicle experience for the surrounding areas. Come to Cover for your Cadillac, Buick, or GMC automobiles. With ASI Protection Services, it's always safe. It's that simple. ASI Services provides commercial and residential alarm monitoring services. ASI does the install and monitoring for way less than the large security chains. They've been in business for 21 years. ASI also offers home automation services, repair services for access control, alarms, and CCTV, plus security camera installation and repair. That's ASI Protection Services. Call 512-467-2615. 
Empire Home Solutions was founded on the principles of honesty, quality, communication, and integrity. They want to help you protect your home. They're proud of the industry they love and bring exceptional details to each job. When it comes to home repair or improving the exterior of your home or business, you can hire any old company or you can hire people who genuinely care about you, people with your best interests in mind, and who educate their customers as well as they perform their jobs. People with a conscience and a genuine desire to do what's right and do it the right way. And that would be Empire Home Solutions at 512-998-3372. The STEAM Team is a true Austin original. The only locally owned full service cleaning and catastrophe management company in the Austin area. The STEAM Team serves homeowners and businesses with a wide range of services, meeting both routine and emergency needs with prompt, expert, guaranteed service. Founded in Austin in 1983, the STEAM Team has built its reputation on performing beyond expectations with greater professional focus and personal involvement than its competitors. From initial consultation and planning through project management, catastrophe management, reconstruction, and restoration. The staff of the STEAM team is professional, dedicated, and enthusiastic. That's the STEAM team at thesteamteam.com. Thunder Cloud Subs is a neighborhood sub shop with a rich tradition of good-natured people serving fresh, fast, and healthy food in a quirky and fun atmosphere. Founded in Austin in 1975, Thunder Cloud has the simple philosophy of selling a great sub at a reasonable price with superb ingredients. Scratch-baked bread, meats, cheeses, and produce sliced fresh every day. All these ingredients come together to create the one and only Thunder Cloud Sub at Four Points and at 700 East Whitestone in Cedar Park. Southern Landscape of Austin. Established in 1982, Southern Landscape is a licensed and insured full-service landscape design and outdoor construction firm dedicated to building custom landscape and outdoor living spaces. For 40 years, they've specialized in features like custom landscape design, water features, vineyards, irrigation, hardscaping, patios, decks, arbors, retaining walls, fencing, outdoor kitchens, pools, fireplaces, fire pits, and lighting. Southern Landscape staff is comprised of full-time, licensed, bonded, and insured professionals who are passionate about their work. Call them today at 512-263-8450 or visit southernlandscape.com. All right, welcome back to the post-game show. Cedar Park 6-1 victor here in game one of the opening round series against Pippen Springs. Here are the offensive numbers. Kay Davis 0 for 4 scored a run. Julian Swift 2 for 4 with a run and had a double. Louis Alonzo 1 for 2, a walk, a hit batsman, an RBI, his runner scored once. Adam Vaughn 0 for 2, but two walks and scored a run. Christian Pickens 1 for 4, a double RBI, scored a run. Brady Richardson 0 for 2, but a sacrifice punt RBI. Quentin Mullen 1 for 3 with an RBI. Brooks Gilman 0 for 2, Jackson Harvey 0 for 0 with a walk. Ethan Becker 1 for 2, a walk and a run. And we're joined now by head coach Lanny Williams. Hey. Doing good, how are you? Doing good, man. Doing good. This, this one had me scared because yeah. they had us right where they wanted us, exactly right. behind us, 6-1 to one late in the game. Exactly. <laughs> Thanks for reminding me, Brian. <laughs> 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 well, I did say to my clock, I was like, man, it's just weird that they were ahead by five runs and I'm feeling nervous right now. I know, I was the same way. Yeah, it's good, man. It's good. The guys responded well. They were very proud of us. Just see the energy they gave throughout the whole game. Got lots of hits back to back to back, base runners back to back. What we've been missing in some of those games. I had, yeah. And solid routine defense, yeah. no errors. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the key, Brad. <laughs> and, and not even any, you know, sometimes we'll commit fielding mistakes that aren't scorable errors. Right. Didn't have any of those right. either. That's exactly right. And no, those things are important. You know, it's just, it's what I call good, clean baseball. You know, and we talk to our guys about it all the time. Like, I'm, I'm a big fan of it. I'm a big fan of clean baseball. So, on both sides, you know. Um, but for the most part, I want our guys to make sure that they, that they, uh, that they understand the importance of that. Yeah. Well, good game. Congratulations, and we'll catch you tomorrow at Griffin Springs. Thank you very much. All good right. Good. And now our guest tonight on the post-game show. And, you know, we need to 
we need to just go ahead and, and make sure that we have a chair with your name on it or something up here, Adam, because Adam Vaughn has been our post-game guest about eight times this year. Yeah. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you for having uh, me. Pitching was interesting tonight because we're looking here. First guy walks. Yeah. There's a sacrifice. Mount. He ends up scoring. Then there's an RBI double deep to the right center. Yeah. Coach comes out. We can tell. I even mentioned on there, yeah, he's just pressing the reset yeah. button there, Adam, a little slow start. What did he say there that made such a huge difference? I don't really remember. I think it was something. Uh, I kind of black out during games, if we're being honest. But it was something along the lines of just calm down, man. You know, trust your stuff. Yeah. You know, just put it in there, see if they can hit it. And then thing. here's what happened after that visit. K, 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 K. Yeah. Six in a row. Deal a lot of them. What pitch was working well for you tonight? Uh, for sure the slider. It's a, it's a new pitch. We've been working in the pen. I just thought my breaking ball was a little bit too slow. I thought guys were seeing it out the hand. You know, I got some feedback from the guys on the team and inner squads. You know, they just said, you know, you, they can see the breaking ball out the hand. So I work on a hard slider, and I, I got it pretty much in a week. And it was just, it, it looked good tonight. It was a swing and miss pitch, and I think it's been what I'm missing for sure. Well, your mixing of speeds is tremendous because I remember about three guys who swung after Louie had caught the ball. Yeah. And I noticed two or three guys who were reaching swinging long before it got there. Yeah. So you got them on both ends of speed. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's just me and Louie. You know, Louie's calling a great game. It's just between me and him. I got a lot of trust in him. I think he trusts me. And we're just mixing up the pitch as well, and I thought he called a great game, and it was just fun to do. I had you at 107 pitches, 67 strikes, 40 balls, mm -hmm. four walks, four hits, a run, 13 strikeouts. Yeah. Do you remember what's your best in a game? That, it's got to be that. I think before that I had like 11 last year at Medina Valley, I think, was my best. Yeah. I remember you saying, a new career high in strikeouts. Oh, okay. Uh, you know, I should have yeah. asked myself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that's that's definitely my highest for sure. So both your career highs have come in the playoffs. Yeah, then. yeah. Good work. Yeah. Thank Congratulations you. on the Thank win you, tonight. Thank you. Get some rest tonight for that yes, game sir. tomorrow. We'll do. All right. Adam Vaughn joining us here on the post game show. Cecil, any last words before we get out of here? Oh man. Uh, just, man, that was a lot of fun, Brad. Um, and, uh, man, if this is what I have to look forward to with my kids getting in here, I just, <laughs> dude, I'm super excited. I'm really excited. Um, love this, uh, man, Cedar Park community showing out again. This is, uh, you know, just amazing what they do out here um, on, a, on a, just a, such a regular basis for for everything. Putting this, putting, putting something like this on for for, uh, for the community, man, showing out for their, for their boys out here on the diamond and, uh, Man, there ain't, there ain't no, way, no, way, no place better. I've been trying for years to get you to move to Cedar Park. We want Miles playing for the Timberwolves. I, I tell you what, man. I need <laughs> to live in Cedar Park because everything I do is out here in Cedar Park. <laughs> 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 and it's a, it's a long drive from Round Rock. I'll tell you what. Oh, I bet. <laughs> there, there's Murray Robinson walking across the field right there. Oh, right. yeah, that's Big Murray. Yeah, Cecil knows a lot of these guys. Let's see, I'm going to name off the football players. Ethan Becker, yep. Carter Wall, mm -hmm. uh, Murray Robinson, Christian Pickens, Houston Molinaro, Adam Vaughn, Jackson Harvey. I guess that's it. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that's a good group, man. It's a great group of kids. All right, so tomorrow, 1 o'clock, pregame show will start at 12.50 on the road in Dripping Springs. I'll be bringing the action. Cecil can't join us. It was a one-night stand for Cecil, and we want to thank you a lot for it. Yeah, no problem, man. If I can do it again, I will. All right, well, Brad Cohn signing off for now. We'll see you tomorrow. This has been Bike Live Network's presentation of Cedar Park Timberwolves Baseball. Sponsored by... ASI Protection Services, Southern Landscape, Covert Cadillac Buick GMC, Centex Material Handling, The Steam Team, Thundercloud Subs, Bussy Roofing, Empire Home Solutions, and Academy Sports and Outdoors. Join us again for the next worldwide broadcast of Cedar Park Timberwolves Baseball.